last week we did a message over a 60 day challenge and one of the things I was going to say in that 60 day challenge that I actually forgot to say but then Bodie told me today that it's something that he's been trying to do is not only you know on that 60 day challenge also consider the music that you're listening to consider the things that you're reading so when you are on the way to work maybe instead of listening to your normal uh, radio station just turn on Kayla or turn on Christian music uh, just 60 days just get into the things of God things that's going to lift you up build you up uh, watch the, the things that you read maybe spend more time in the Bible less time in just books you know uh, anything that you can do to get close to God use that challenge to get closer to the Lord and, and music and reading is a big part of it so Thank you, Bodie. I forgot to mention that last week. But today, I want to talk about, well, to be honest with you, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, because the Lord gave me one piece of paper. But there's some things that the Lord wants to say today, and He's just going to speak through me concerning our past. So I got some scriptures that the Lord did give me. I want to go over these scriptures. And the rest of it, God's just going to say what we need to hear. But we have to understand, first of all, I want to start in Micah 7.19. I'm just going to go through these scriptures because I really don't know what the Lord has for us today. I, I tried to spend time in it this morning, and this is just what the Lord kept putting on my heart. But the first one's in Micah 7.19. It says, He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sin into the depths of the sea. In Psalm 103.12, this talks about casting our sins as far as the east is from the west. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And there's two scriptures, actually there's more than two scriptures about how God will forgive us our sin and, and forget our sin. But here's just two examples that I that I have for today. In Jeremiah 31, 34, it says, I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. And in Jeremiah 33, 8, it says, I will cleanse them from all of their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all of their iniquities whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. The Lord wants to say today, it doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. See, God has a plan for every single one of us. He has something for all of us to do. He has a purpose for our life. A lot of people I feel like sometimes that God just don't have something for them, but He does. Sometimes people feel like that because of their past that God can't use them, but He will. Our past doesn't matter. See, when we go to God and we have problems and situations, maybe the way that we grew up, maybe our past sins, things maybe we have done things that we just feel like is horrible and God can't use us, God said that when we go to Him in repentance, when we get to a place in our life and we go to Him, God said that when we go to Him and ask for that forgiveness, He said He will take our sin and cast it as far as the east is from the west. East and west never meet. North and south, they meet. So you can see how God used east and west for a reason. They never meet. He said that he'll take those sins and transgressions and he'll bury them in the depths of the sea, a place where no man has ever been. That's because that's where our sin is. There's people trying to get to the most depths part of the sea, but they're not going to get there because that's where God has put our sin and our past sins were not meant to be stirred back up. The only one that's going to stir up your past sin is the devil, the enemy. See, every time you're trying to do things for God, Every time you try to want to serve the Lord, every time God puts on your heart to do something for Him, whatever it might be, it might be as simple as somebody wanting to put all the envelopes in the, you know, for the offerings in the back of the pews or, or clean the church. It doesn't, as long as you're doing it for God, that's all that matters. There's not such a thing as a big job and a little job when it comes to the Lord. 
As long as you're doing what God has called you to do, that's all that matters. And every time you try to get in the will of God, every time you try to do what God has called you to do, you're going to have resistance rise up in your life. Satan does not want you to get close to God. So he tries to put things in your life to, make, to put resistance in your life to keep you from doing what God has a plan for your life to do. We, that's what we have to recognize when this happens. That's what we have to get in the Word every day because the Word is what sustains us through those battles and those problems and those situations. Listen, it's like if, if our military... If they go to war with somebody and they don't have a, they don't know who the enemy is and they don't know, they don't have a, pa a plan in place to have victory over in that war, the same thing is in our spiritual life. If we don't know who the enemy is and we don't know how he fights, we're not going to win that war. That's why we have to be in God's Word every day because this Word tells us who the enemy is. It tells us how to fight the enemy and have victory over the things of the devil. So when you feel like that your past is just so bad that there's no way that God could forgive you of your sin, that there's no way that God could use you, that there's no way that God has a purpose for your life, that's nothing more than a trick of the enemy. That's nothing more than Satan planting seeds in your mind to keep you from moving forward for God. Because see, God said that when we go to Him, no matter how bad our past is, it doesn't matter. And I want to encourage you today to know, I want you to know today that what you do for God from today forward is all that matters. Your past from today backwards, it doesn't matter. It does not matter in God's eyes. God said that when you came to Him in repentance, when you came to Him and asked Him to forgive you of those past sins, to, to use you, to be in His will, He said He took those and cast them as far as the east is from the west. And many times in the Bible, He said, I have forgiven you and I have forgotten. See, Satan tries to keep it stirred up in your mind. Satan tries to keep you in your past so you can't move forward for God. Satan tries to make you feel like your past is going to keep you from the things of the Lord. But that's not what God said. And God said He has mighty things for you. Jeremiah 33.3 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer thee, answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things that you knew not. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and He will show you great and mighty things. But you have to make a decision. You have to decide, I'm going to do this. You have to get to a point in your life when you say, you know what, I try to do it on my own. I try to live life the way that I felt like I needed to live it, and I just can't do it anymore. Because of the problems that keep arising, the pain that we find ourselves in, the situations and all these other things that just pull us down and make us miserable inside. But God wants you to know, you can put all that behind you. You can find peace. You can find joy. You can find happiness. You can find contentment. I hear so many people talking about, man, I just don't have the things I wish I had. I, you know, I see other people with all these other great things, and I just wish I could have some of that, some of those good things. Quit worrying about what everybody else has. Worry, just worry about what you have and be thankful for it. Give God praise for the things that you have in your life because you, may, you could not even have those things. We talk about, well, I wish God would just bless me with more money. I wish God would just get... You know what? Learn to be thankful for the things that you do have. Learn to be content with the things that you do have. Learn to, learn to manage the, the money that you do have. And then maybe then God can bless you with more. Maybe, that, maybe the uh, money management's a problem. You're not being faithful in your money. So why would God want to give you more of it if you're spending recklessly right now? If you can't handle what you have, why would God bless you with more? You see? So, God wants you to know that no matter what your past is, no matter what you've been through, no, no, it doesn't matter if you think you're such a horrible person, it does not matter. God said, it's forgiven and it's forgotten. Listen, when you go to God, and you go to Him in prayer, and you say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I can't do this on my own anymore. Lord, I need you to lead and guide me. When you do that, 
God said, I will never remember your sin anymore. You start with a clean slate. And you know, I hear people in the world, when they hear that, they say, man, that's just a crutch. That's just a way out of what you did. That's just a way out of things. But you know what I call it? I call it grace. As a born-again Christian, we call it grace. Because we know God's love. We know that God sent His Son to this earth to shed His blood on that cross that we could be forgiven. And that's grace. And that's why it's so important for us as a church to go out into the community and share that God's love with other people. Because there's people lost out there who do think that they're no good, who do think that, that God could not use them. They're so used to people, what well, we're talking about the homeless, they're so used to people talking down to them. They're so used to people just making them feel this tall. They're, they're used to people making them feel horrible about their lives, that, that they can't rise up above it as a church. As people of God, it is our job to go out and speak good into their life, to share God's Word, to share God's salvation, so they can rise up above all that negativity that's being placed upon them in their life. That's our job as Christians. If you want to be a Christian, we don't come to church and, you know, and, and oh yeah, I went to church today, I'm a Christian, then we go live like the world six days a week. A Christian is a Christ-like Christian. It is our job to be Christ-like. It is our goal to be like Christ. We're never going to be without sin. We're never going to be perfect. But we can sure strive to be. And we can be an example to other people by how we live our life. When you see somebody down and out, when you see somebody struggling, maybe you're struggling yourself. We have to let them know. It doesn't matter. God can take bad and make good. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for their life. But it's up to us to show them what God's love is all about. You have a new slate. You have a new life in Christ when you give your life to the Lord. The next scripture I want to show you is in 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is one of my favorite scriptures because there's so much in this one little scripture. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It, like I said, it doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you've been through. When you give your life to the Lord, I want, first of all, I want us to understand, it says, therefore, if, if, it said on the screen, it said it's your decision. If any man be in Christ. It says if right there because God knows you may and you may not. You may accept that gift. You may deny it. That's why God has given us a free will. It's up to us to make that decision. God is not going to force Himself upon us. God is not going to make us serve Him. God is not going to make us do something that we don't want to do. We've got to get to a point in our life when we say, Man, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. Nothing seems to be working out. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of trying to go the other direction. I'm tired. Lord, I need you. I need you to take my life. I need you to heal me. I need you to, to guide me. I need you just to take my life and use it. Help me to be content with what I have. Help me to, help me to let your love flow through me to others. When we get to that point, if any man be in Christ, we're a new creature. I believe we spoke on that scripture a little bit last week too. But we're a new creature. We're a new creation. When we go to the cross, when we go to God in prayer, He turns us into a new creature, a new creation. And that's why it's so important to come to church on Sunday and every time the doors are open, just come and hear the Word and, and get involved in the church because we are a new creation in Christ. And God wants to mold us into the person that He wants us to be. And I'll tell you something, when we allow God to mold us into the person He wants us to be, it is then that we find true success. We try to find success in this world. We try to find success in the things of money and, and, and things that we can obtain from this world. But true success is when we yield our life to the Lord and we just say, Use me, Lord. Lord, help me be in your will. I give you my life. And when we do that and you're 100% honest 
and you do everything you can to serve God. That's why we do the 60-day challenge. When you do everything you can to serve God, this is when you find true success in your life. You find peace and joy and contentment. All those horrible things that you feel like are rising up against you. you know, all of a sudden, it, it doesn't matter anymore because you know that God is with you. You know that God is going to see you through it. You know that you might be walking through a storm, but you know that God is going to get you on the other side of that storm. But first, you've got to sell out to God. First, you've got to get to a point to where you say, I don't care about my past. I don't care what people speak into my life. All I care about are the things of the Lord. And when you do that, your life will begin to change. God will begin to bless you. God will begin to heal you. God will begin to do things in your life that you never imagined. He said it in Jeremiah 33, 3, I will show you great and mighty things that you knew not. But you're a new creation in Christ. You're a new creature. Old things are passed away. You see, when we see that scripture, the Lord showed me this when I was studying in that scripture this morning. And I was trying to figure out, what am I going to say today, Lord? I don't, you know, you've got to give me something because I don't know. And the Lord said, usually when I look at that scripture, old things are passed away. When I, when I do that scripture, I usually talk about how our, our past life fall to the wayside, our sinful ways, the things that we used to do, uh, and like, like going to the bars, and instead of going to the bars, you go to church and those types of things. But the Lord showed me something else. You're a new creature. Not only are you a new creature and old things are passed away as far as your sinful life, but also you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Your sinful life, the, those bad things that kept you down, you're a new creature. You don't have to dwell on those things anymore. The way that you were raised, the way that you grew up, the things that pull you down, all those negative things in your life, you're a new creature in Christ. All things are become new. That God wants to use you. God has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for you. He has you in His house for a reason because He wants you to prosper in Him. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You're a new creature in Christ. And another scripture just right across the page here in 2 Corinthians 6, 17 through 18, we're talking about a new beginning. As bad as a person as you think you might be, as bad, maybe you gave your life to the Lord years ago and you've gotten away from God and you feel like, man, I just feel horrible, I feel miserable on the inside, I know I need to get back to God and I just don't know if God will forgive me. You can be forgiven. You can get right with the Lord again. And it says right here, Wherefore, come out from among them, be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean things of the world, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughter. When you read that, when you come out from among the world, when you come out from among the world and you quit touching the unclean things of the world and you give your life to the Lord, you have a new beginning. God said at that time, when you make that decision, God said, I will be your father. And what does a father do? He takes care of his children. He doesn't say, a dad, anybody can be a dad. I'm talking about a, a father taking care of his children. God wants to take care of his children. And when you go to him, when you go to God in, in repentance, when you go to God and say, Lord, forgive me, I need you, and I can't do this on my own, when we do those, we become a new creation, old things are begin to pass away, all things become new. When we do that, he says, I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and you will be my daughters. You have a new beginning in Christ, but you have to make a decision to do it. You have to make a decision to go to the cross. You have to make a decision to say, you know what, I can't do this on my own. And you have to make a decision to do it. I always, I always think about that Nike logo. You remember back in, I think it was the 80s, 90s, that one of the, it was probably one of the biggest marketing uh, tools back, in, back then. In fact, I was reading it not too long ago, and it said it was one of the, one of the top marketing tools that uh, ever used in a commercial. You probably remember it had the Nike logo, and it said, just do it. Just do it. When it comes to serving God, 
Make a decision. Just do it. It's that simple. There's nothing hard about it. Just do it. If God laid on your heart to do something, just do it. If God told you to do something in the church, just do it. If God told you to go after somebody, just do it. If God said do this or do that, just do it. It's not a big deal. Listen, if God said to do something, He's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the wisdom. He's going to give you the knowledge. He's going to give you the resources. He's going to give you everything that you need to be successful to do His work. God is not going to tell you to do something for you to fail. And I have, I have to remind myself of that as we start this church. I have to remind myself of that sometimes. God told me to do this. He is not going to set me up for failure. This is of the Lord. When you go to the cross, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgotten. Your sins are cast as far as the east is from the west. Your sins are buried in the depths of the sea. When you go to the cross, old things begin to pass away and all things become new. When you go to the cross, you have a new beginning in Christ. He will become your father. You become his son and his daughter. But first you have to make that decision. First you have to get to a point in your life when you say, I need the Lord in my life. The things that you've done in your past, the sinful life that you had, God said, I will forgive and I will forgive. But what you have to remember is the people around you are not so quick to do the same. You see, they'll, they'll remember they, you know, you hear people say, oh, I'll forgive you, but I'm not going to forgive. Well, that's not true forgiveness. When people say, I'll forgive, that's when, you know, it's always in the back of their mind, and they always bring it up, they always talk about it, trying to make you feel, but that's not forgiveness. Only God can forgive that way, really. And you can have that kind of forgiveness if you do it through God. But when you try to do it on your own, it's tough to do. But you can do anything through Christ. So when you're, trying to, when you're trying to get right with the Lord, maybe, maybe you've never given your life to the Lord and you do that, and God said He's going to forgive you of your past, and you're trying, all your friends and family, your co-workers that you're around, they're going to remember the person that you were, you see, and they're going to keep bringing it up. Isn't it funny how when you first get saved and give your life to the Lord and you're trying to get away from those things, man, people will start calling you from 20 years ago. Hey, let's go out and let's do this and let's do that. You know, the things that you used to do. Isn't it funny when you're trying to get right with God, all of a sudden friends come out of the wood, so-called friends come out of the woodwork trying to get you to do things that you know you shouldn't be doing? Isn't it funny every time God calls you to do something and you're trying to do right, all of a sudden, there's more people rising up, you know, wanting you to go to the parties and go do this, go do that, and be places you know you shouldn't be. Ask yourself one question. Well, I don't know if I should do that or not. Well, if Jesus came back and you were there, would he be happy with that? Ask yourself that question. If I do this and Jesus came back, would he be happy with what I'm doing? When Jesus comes back, I don't want to sit there and have a bear in my hand. I'd rather have this in my hand. When Jesus comes back, I don't want him to find me at the local bar. I'd rather him find me on the corner of Oklahoma City preaching to the homeless with this in my hand. You see what I'm saying? When Jesus comes, just ask yourself that question. If Jesus came back, what would he find me doing? And there's your answer. Do not let people around you continually make you feel pulled down because of your past. The only one that met, this is where you have to learn. You have to learn not to care about what people think about your past. Don't let people, every time they want to bring up your past, don't let that discourage you. As a matter of fact, you speak back into those things. You speak and you say, you know what? God said that, you know, I've given my life to the Lord and God said I'm forgiven and it's forgotten. That's, that's the old me. This is the new me. I'm, I'm a creature. I'm a child of God. I'm a new creature. And you know what? When you begin talking like that, people's going to look at you like you're crazy. People's going to look, look at you like you're weird. But you just let them look at you like that. Because all that matters is what God thinks. You see? And what happens is over time, because what the people in your past, as you're trying to get away from those things and God's trying to pull you out of it and make you a new creature, they're going to keep talking about your past. But the longer you show them that this is for real, this is a change, this is who I am now. 
I don't care about those things anymore. The things I care about are of God. And the longer they see you doing that, they will eventually want what you have because the light is shining through you. But if you begin to listen to what they're saying, it won't be long before you're doing the same things that they're doing, that you used to do. And that's why you have to get closer to God. That's why you can't worry about your past. I hear people say things like, well, man, my past is so bad, I just don't think, really, because there's a man in the Bible named Saul that killed Christians. There was a man in the Bible named Saul. He killed Christians because they were Christians. And yet God got a hold of his heart and made him one of the strongest men in the Bible. You can't tell me that you killed Christians just because they were Christians. You haven't done anything that bad. So don't tell me that your past is so bad that God cannot use you. It don't matter what you've done. God took someone who killed Christians and turned him into a strong soldier of God. And he can do the same thing with us. You just can't let the people in your past and around you make you think otherwise. Don't let people think because you're trying to serve God. Don't let people make you think because you're trying to do the right thing. Don't let people make you think that you can't do it because you can do it. Just quit worrying about what they're saying and just worry about what God says. God has a plan. He has a purpose for every life. The other scriptures I was going to share, I'm just going to show you what it is. It's called the Roman Road. When you get to a point in your life and you say, I need God. I need the Lord in my life. It's called the, there's the scriptures that lead up, and you go through Ecclesiastes all the way up to Romans uh, 10 and 13. Basically what it says is we're all sinners. We're all sinners that need God and we need His forgiveness. It says that we're all sinners that fall short of His glory. But see, Jesus went to the cross and shed His blood that we could find forgiveness. And that's that's why He came to this earth, to shed His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. When we do that, when we accept the Holy Spirit into our heart, the Bible says we're born again. Sometimes we get away from the things of God. Sometimes we give our life to the Lord and we kind of stray away from God. We, we start to you know, do our own thing. We start to listen too much to what other people are saying. or whatever, whatever the case might be, we get away from the Lord. But you know what? It's real simple to come back. In fact, I did a sermon a few months ago called Come Back Home, talking to the Christians that strayed away from God. Come back home. Because God's waiting with His arms open. Come back home. Just because we got saved at one point in our life, just because we gave our life to the Lord and we strayed away, God's not in the heavens ready to tackle you and make a miserable thing. He's, he's, he's waiting with open arms. He's waiting for you to come back home. All you have to do is confess your sin. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm ready to come back. Lord, I, I want to serve you again. Lord, I want to put you first in my life again. Lord, I, I just want you to use me. I, that joy and that peace I used to have, Lord, I want that back in my heart. As David said, return the joy of thy salvation. Because see, when we get away from God, we lose that joy in our heart. We lose that peace. We lose that comfort, that content. We lose it because a sin begins to build up in our life. But when we come back home, he replaces all that with joy once again. I'm back right with the Lord. I'm doing the things that God wants me to do now. There's a purpose for my life, and God wants to use me. All we have to do is make a decision to come back home. God has given us a free will. Like I said when I first started, He's not going to force Himself on us. He's given us a free will. It's like, a, it's like I said in the past. People say, I can't believe a loving God would send somebody to hell. He don't. God don't send people to hell, and God don't send people to heaven. He gave us a free will. It's our own decision. It's our own choice. You hear people say, well, I, I wish I had a, a manual on life. We do. It's right here. It's God's manual on life. 
And in this book, it tells us how we end up in heaven and how you end up in hell. And then he leaves it up to us to make that choice. He's not going to force it upon us. It's our own decision. So when we leave here today, God just wants you to know your past does not matter. What you've done does not matter because there's people holding on to their past. There's people that won't let their past go. Things have happened in their past that they're hanging on to it and they're not allowing God to bless them the way that God truly wants to bless. You've got to let it go. You've got to learn how to forgive. You've got to learn how to forget like God does. And when you do that, you'll find peace and joy in your heart. When you come back home and come back to the Lord, you'll find peace and joy in your heart. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. But it's our decision. It's our decision to come back home. It's our decision to give our life to the Lord. So when you leave here today, I want you to know that God has a purpose for your life. He has a plan for you. Your past does not matter. It doesn't matter what you've done from this point back. All that matters is this point forward. And there's, some, there's one more thing I want to say in closing. I cannot make people serve God. Just like God has given us a free will to, to do the things that we're supposed to be doing, I cannot make people serve God. I cannot, I cannot make people come to church. I cannot make people tithe. I cannot make people go to the homeless ministry. I cannot make people do this and do that for God. You have to make your own decision. All I can do is stand up here and bring the Word of God. It is up to the people to listen to it and do what the Word says. Not just hear it, but be doers of it. That's all I can do. As long as I'm doing what God has called me to do, so be it. That's all, that's all I can do. But I would hope that the people that come to this church, we rise up and make a difference in our communities. We rise up. I don't want people coming to church and just warming the pews and just coming to church because, well, they, said, they can say I came to church. We've we got to be more than that. We, we gotta, we gotta, there, there's so many people going to hell. This nation is going to hell as we speak because we're getting so far away from God. There's work to be done. Where we talk about sending people to third world countries on missions, we need, to, we need to start right here in America at this point. I mean, yeah, we need to get the word all over the world, but let, uh, come on, let's start right here in our own backyard. We have a mission field, our homes, our neighbors, our neighborhoods, our, our cities, our workplaces. I mean, there's people going to hell everywhere. It's up to us to share God's love and plan of salvation and let them know your past doesn't matter. It's your future that God cares about. With that said, I want to ask that you bow your head and close your eyes. I want to, I want to pray with those who are watching the online ministry. If God is speaking to your heart, I want to right now for those who are sitting here today, just, just if the Lord is speaking to you, just use this time to let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. I want to pray with those watching on the online ministry, and after that we'll have a song of invitation. If you need to come forward and pray, you can pray right where you're at. That's your time with God. We have a prayer room. We can go back when nobody can hear. If it's something you want to talk about or if you want to pray about something, we can go back and, and be alone. But I want to, while you're doing that, I want to pray with those watching online. If you're worried about your past, if you're concerned about the things that you used to do or who you used to be, I want you to know it doesn't matter. God said that when you give your life to Him, you're a new creature in Christ, that your sins are forgiven, that your sins are cast as far as the east is from the west. You just heard the message. If you'll pray this simple prayer, the Bible says that you'll be born again, and that's your first step to getting right with God. So follow me in this prayer. Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name. I know that you died for my sin. I know that you arose on the third day. Today, I ask that you come into my heart to be my personal Savior, to forgive me of my sin, to lead and guide from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says you've been born again. If you'll contact us, we'll help you find a church in your area.